gear, pilots in training are making sure everything is just right. Each flight is a life lesson. I like to say to them that in this class, you will probably learn something which will save your life or may actually be a glimpse of what was the cause of your death. Greg Pinnell has been flying the skies for 33 years. As a veteran pilot, he's also a flight surgeon, a doctor who knows what can happen to us way up high. Flight puts a variety of stresses on the human body that we weren't really designed for. Today, Greg will guide these students through a breathtaking experiment. They'll be heading into the specially sealed box. With oxygen being sucked out, it's simply toxic. Soon they'll experience what it feels like to have low oxygen and high nitrogen in their blood at 30,000 feet, the average cruising altitude for commercial flights. Is there a type of hypoxia out of the four that's uh, most dangerous to pilots? Hypoxic hypoxia is really the one that is the most dangerous. What happens when we go into an oxygen depleted environment is the amount of oxygen within our blood begins to drop. When that happens, the brain goes into the, what we call the hypoxic state. Cognition, the ability to think becomes harder. And then when it gets bad enough, ultimately the brain shuts down and we lose consciousness. It's something that could easily happen. 67 aviation deaths were attributed to hypoxia between 1965 and 1990. In 1999, six people died in a crash, carrying golfer Payne Stewart. And in 2005, 121 people died on Helios Flight 522. Another major crash where hypoxia was ruled the cause of pilot incapacitation. This is why the U.S. Air Force requires this training every five years, something not mandatory for commercial pilots across the board. There are various different scenarios where you can lose altitude. The first and most dramatic is, of course, an explosive decompression, such as a failure of a window. Another form would be uh, either a slow leak through a door seal or the possibility that the pressurization system has failed in the aircraft. All situations a pilot never wants to experience. But if these students can recognize their own symptoms, they could save their lives and their passengers. What we'll attempt to do is show them how hard it is to be able to operate in that environment and then also try to train them how to quickly redon their mask to recover. In they go. The hypoxic signs and symptoms can vary, but hypoxia uh, generally is not unpleasant. Okay, gentlemen, take off your mask. And you're already down into the 80s. That's cyanosis right there. Pulse and oxygen saturation is closely yep. monitored. Try working your way through that. And then the we'll... nut, the washer? Yep. <laughs> I'm yep. starting to feel the headache, too. Are you starting to get a little headache? Oh. He's starting to get a little air hunger. That is enough for you, my friend. For me? Yep, yep. You go on oxygen. You're starting to get the, what we call the million-mile stare. They can look like they're doing great, and then all of a sudden, they'll decompensate really quick and then the next thing you know, they're heading for the floor. We'll see them start to get some tremors in the hands and the, and the stare will go blank and we, we definitely try to get them out of here before that or get them back on oxygen. Safe intervention. Before round two, they need some recovery time. I didn't realize how gone I was. For me, I was just sort of like keenly aware that there was something uh, odd going on. I don't even know what I was trying to do. I... <laughs> It was just totally unaware. I wouldn't have been able to do anything had that been happening to me in an airplane. But you would have been very happy about it because you were definitely in the you were definitely in the euphoria in the euphoria state. Getting a washer on a screw is one thing, but maneuvering a plane is quite another. Greg is taking the hypoxic test to new heights by seeing how Fitz can handle a flight simulator. 98% pulse ox. His pulse is running a little bit fast, but I think he's a little bit nervous too. I'm going to take your mask off. How about just a level turn, uh, left heading 270. All right, left heading 270. He's having a hard time holding his pitch. Are you feeling it? Yeah, I can definitely tell the scan's a little bit more, uh, well, there you go, through the... <laughs> OK, Captain, your, your aircraft is just depressurized. I think you better put your mask on. 
Saved by the mask this time. In a real flight, oxygen supply would only give the pilots about half an hour. In commercial airliners, the passengers in the back only have between 10 and 15 minutes. The air crew up front have a longer amount of time that they have oxygen available to them. Today was a wake-up call. You can talk about the symptoms all you want, but I think until you feel them, it's, you're not going to fully understand. It is a life and death course. It's a test you only get to fail once. Wow, that is scary stuff. Mm, great story. All right, let's all inhale. And now that we're all breathing the proper amount of oxygen, this next story also